Welcome to the eighth video on first order modelling. This video is looking at tank level systems. Now, tank level systems are very common in the process industry and to some extent elsewhere, and therefore quite important for us to model. However, we're only going to do a relatively simple example. If you need to do more complicated examples, hopefully you can take the understanding from these videos and apply it to sort those out by yourself. So what are we going to assume? We're going to assume a simple tank which has a flow coming in marked here and a flow coming out marked here. We're also going to assume that this tank has got a particular depth of fluid which we'll denote as H. What we want to do is consider how does the depth in this tank depend upon the flow in and the flow out and also how does the flow out depend upon the depth and you notice there's an interaction between these two and once we've sorted that interaction what we will find is the model for the behavior of the tank. <laughs> Some details then. So we've re-sketched the diagram here and what we'll do is we'll go through it one bit at a time and derive the model. First of all, let's look at flow out. What we're going to do is ask ourselves, how do you determine the flow through a restriction? So you'll see, in essence, there's a restriction here, the outlet pipe. Now, there's a simple rule which says that the flow through a restriction depends upon the pressure difference, here marked as P1 minus P2, between the two ends. Now, we also know that the pressure at the bottom of a tank of fluid can be approximated by rho g h, where rho is the density of the fluid, g acceleration due to gravity, and h the depth. Now we should clarify that's the pressure difference between the bottom of the tank and the top of the tank, and therefore in essence the pressure difference between p1 and p2 will also be rho g h. So what we can say, therefore, is that the flow out will depend upon rho g h, which you'll see is given here, and it will, it will have some constant, which here I've marked as r. Now that constant will depend on many things, such as the cross-sectional area of this outlet pipe, what materials the outlet pipe's made of, whether it's rough or smooth, etc, etc. And we're not going to deal with that level of uh, detail in these videos. We're just going to assume that such an R exists. Now we should also mention that in reality, if you were to do a higher level course, the flow out isn't just linear in this pressure difference. It's slightly more complicated, but you'll find the linear approximation is good enough for many examples. What next then? Next thing is to ask ourselves, OK, but what's happening to the fluid in this tank? We might want to know what's the rate of change of volume stored. So here you'll notice I've written dv dt. What's the rate of change of volume stored of fluid in this tank? Now, if we assume that this tank has a uniform cross-sectional area, which is a very common scenario, then dv dt can be written as a dh dt. So a, the cross-sectional area, dh dt, the rate of change of depth with time. Now clearly the rate of change of volume with time has got to be the difference between the flow rate in and the flow rate out. So we have a very simple equation there. And what I can do next is I can say, ah, but I know the flow out. I've determined it here. So I can put that flow out in there. And if I do that, I end up with this simple expression here. A dh dt plus r rho g times h equals f in. And that's the model for the depth in our tank. What next then? Well, you remember we talked about time constant forms in the previous video, so that's what we're going to do here. First, we're going to take that model, uh, the model given up here, and then we're going to divide through by r rho g in order to put it in time constant form. You'll see that's what we've done here. We've divided through by r rho g. And what we end up with is a model of this form, T dh dt plus h equals k times the flow rate in, with a time constant of a over r rho g, and a gain of 1 over r rho g. 
And what will you notice? You'll see the time constant t depends on the cross-sectional area and this r rho g term, whereas the gain only depends on this r rho g term. Now, just a note at the bottom here, this is quite an important note. If you want to do an analogy with things like resistors and capacitors, please note that an equivalent resistance is actually 1 over r rho g. So if you increase r rho g, you actually reduce the resistance. So some observations. First of all, we've just restated. Here's our model, here's our time constant form. T A over R rho G, gain 1 over R rho G. So what can we see? Capital T is the time constant. If the cross-sectional area capital A is increased, the time constant increases. So the rate at which this tank fills or empties gets slower if you make the cross-sectional area bigger. And that's exactly what you expect, because a bigger cross-sectional area, it stores more fluid. Conversely, if you increase ROG, then you will get the opposite effect. The time constant will get slower, and the gain will get smaller. However, remember that it's 1 over ROG is essentially equivalent to the resistance. So if we argue a different way, if we increase the resistance to flow, of this pipe, and we might do that by making the pipe very small uh, in some sense. So if we increase the resistance to flow, which means we increase 1 over ROG, then that will also increase the time constant, and it will increase the steady state gain. And again, you'll see that's exactly what you expect. If you don't allow fluid to flow through this resistance very easily, it will take a lot longer for the fluid to flow out, and therefore the time constant of the behavior will be slower, and the steady state depth, for example, would be much deeper.